The car is packed and you're ready to go. The beach, it's 500 miles away, and you're excited for a bit of vacation with family and friends. All you have to do is get there. So which would you use? A globe or a map? Most of us would use the map because it gives us the details we need to know, like what turns to take and where the gas stations are located. The same is true in solving the climate crisis. Instead of a globe, we need a roadmap to reverse global warming quickly, safely, and equitably. The science is clear, and we humans are warming the planet by adding dangerous amounts of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. Rising sea levels threaten populations around the globe, and heat waves and supercharged hurricanes are deadlier than ever before. Heads of state, leaders of industry, and those on the ground all agree the status quo is not an option, and we must get moving. Fortunately, our destination is clear, and it's called Drawdown. Drawdown is the point in time when the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere begins to decrease on a year-to-year -year basis, and it's when the planet's thermostat stops rising. We only get there by aggressively scaling our best climate solutions. And we even know what those are. Thanks to the work of the nonprofit Project Drawdown, dozens upon dozens of our most impactful and currently available solutions to the climate crisis have been identified and their effectiveness measured. From bamboo production to bicycle infrastructure, LED lighting to landfill methane capture, Project Drawdown has shown us what we can and should be doing at scale globally. In a sense, they've given us the globe of climate solutions, which, to be perfectly clear, is incredibly important. We need to know what is possible at the largest of scales in order to understand how best to solve the climate crisis. Except there's one problem. When we zoom in on that global map of solutions, the resolution quickly gets blurry. What solutions work best in England or in Ethiopia? How about in Minnesota or in Mississippi? Local factors like geography, weather, politics, and culture are critically important to understanding what solutions can be deployed for maximum effectiveness in any one place. And no two regions are going to be the same. We haven't had a method for plotting localized climate roadmaps. Until now. I help lead Drawdown Georgia, an initiative of the Ray C. Anderson Foundation. Drawdown Georgia began several years ago when we asked the question, what can Georgia do to help solve the climate crisis? We realized there was a gap that we could fill in our home state, and so we set out to make Georgia a leading state for climate solutions. We pulled together the best climate scientists and researchers from some of the leading universities in our state. With Project Drawdown's work as our inspiration, we took their list of 80 or so climate solutions, and we asked a series of questions about each one. Is it market ready in Georgia? Is there enough local experience and data to measure its potential in our state? Can it provide a meaningful amount of greenhouse gas reduction? And is the solution affordable? Those are the scientific and economic questions that we needed to know for our local climate roadmap. They represent just one side of the coin, though. There is another critical set of questions relating to how climate solutions impact society. How can we advance equity in our disadvantaged communities? What are the implications for job growth and financial well-being within the state? Which solutions enhance the natural environment in Georgia? And how can we improve public health by scaling climate solutions? These four considerations, equity, the economy, the environment, and health, ensure that Drawdown Georgia goes beyond carbon. 
This other side of the coin is just as necessary for an effective roadmap because climate solutions don't scale in a factory or in a laboratory. They scale in real life against the backdrop of the day-to-day -day issues that matter to the people in our communities. 20 high-impact climate solutions spanning five sectors emerged from this process. Some help us reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that Georgia puts into the atmosphere, like large-scale solar, electric vehicles, and recycling. Others enhance Georgia's ability to pull greenhouse gases back down, like planting trees and conservation agriculture. All told, these solutions show that Georgia has the potential to reduce its negative impact on the climate by one-third this decade and likely save millions of dollars in the process. That would set the table to hopefully eliminate our negative impact on the climate next decade. That's the science side of the climate solution coin. Now, what about the society side? The research team found a complex web of interconnected challenges and opportunities, which only reinforces the need for a localized drawdown roadmap. Mostly, climate solutions go beyond greenhouse gas reduction and yield other benefits to Georgians in every community. Sometimes, though, we have to be thoughtful about how we scale solutions to make sure we don't leave anyone behind. Let me give you a few examples, two that show the many benefits of climate solutions and one that shows how we have to be careful to get them right. First is temperate forest stewardship, which relates to how we cultivate, manage, and harvest our forest lands for products like paper and lumber. There are 22 million acres of working forests in Georgia, which cover 60% of the state. We are the largest forestry state in America, generating $36 billion in annual economic impact and contributing to 141,000 jobs. Every tree we grow cleans our air and our water. Every Georgian, even those who don't care all that much about climate change, benefits in so many ways from a vibrant forestry industry. How about reduced food waste? One out of every eight Georgians is food insecure. By solving hunger and malnutrition, we also keep food out of landfills, protecting the surrounding environment and reducing the amount of greenhouse gases we put into the atmosphere. It's a clear win-win solution. Then we have rooftop solar. It's a great solution for the climate, but most homes in Georgia with solar panels are in affluent communities. That's because nearly all rooftop solar panels in our state have to be privately financed. Only those with enough money to afford the upfront cost can install them and enjoy the benefit of cheaper electricity. As rooftop solar scales, we want disadvantaged communities to share in the benefits that it brings, like lower bills and new jobs. We will need innovative approaches in policy, finance, and philanthropy to ensure that rooftop solar scales for the benefit of all communities. When we understand climate solutions like these through the lens of real-life local issues, it becomes clear that we are all in this together and that climate solutions matter to all Georgians, regardless of race, gender, profession, political party, or where they live in the state. Drawdown Georgia is providing the research, the framework, and the platform, and I invite all Georgians, elected officials, heads of businesses, leaders of civic organizations and science, to join this movement to do their part to help scale these 20 solutions. And if we do this work right, we can make a difference beyond our borders. My greatest hope for Drawdown Georgia is that we inspire others to make their own 
climate roadmaps. While Georgia's solution set is unique to our state, there's nothing unique about our approach. What we are doing can and should be replicated around the world because solutions happen locally and because no one knows a place better than its own people. Thank you.